Hey guys, welcome to Airgun Expo 2021. And we have Larry from Airguns of Arizona with a couple of his day state guns. But before we talk about these, I want to thank our sponsors. The first one, Gateway, Air Gateway to Air Guns. <laughs> with a plethora of in air gun information, go to www.gatewaytoairguns.org. And then Airguns of Arizona, and they have all kinds, this is just a small bit of what they have. They sell all kinds of air gun air guns, air gun products, hunting things. Go to www.airgunsofarizona.com to check them out. And also, the pellet of the show, Predator Pellets, Predator International. Is it predatorinternational.com? No. Predator Pellets. Predatorpellets.com. Go check them out too. They have a wide variety of pellets. Um, it may take a little time to get some right now. There are shipping issues, so please be patient. But okay, Larry, he's gonna teach me about yeah, these most guns of right us here. in the industry are having issues with shipping, you know, getting the product that we need and the product that everybody is wanting. Yeah. So COVID really put a hurt on a lot of us. Yes. So we're gonna look at the Day State Red Wolf today. And it was named Red Wolf. The original series was a Rosso, which means red. Uh, and it was the reverse of this stock right here with the red on it. So every place you see gray, it was red. So that was a limited edition. So this is the standard stock that we sell right now. It also comes in a midnight blue and walnut. If you like the traditional walnut, it comes in walnut. And I've never, I didn't hand select this but you can see this is a beautiful stock. Uh, so any, any walnut stock you get from Day State's going to look at least this good. So I just pulled it off the shelf. I was looking at something that would shoot. So this is the one that I shoot in extreme field target and 50 and 100 yard bench rest. It's 30 caliber. So as you can see, adjustable cheek piece. The stock, how do you think it fit? I mean, you just sighted this one in. It was super comfortable. Yeah. Okay. I do. So I do. the length of pull seems to fit everyone. Uh, one of the things that I haven't mentioned is that on these butt pads, you can raise them up and down and you can camp them as well. Yeah. So it comes with a 480 cc bottle. Uh, you can put a larger bottle on there, but how many shots do you need? You know, you can hunt all day for the most part. So how and, many shots do you get? Uh, I was afraid you were gonna ask that. <laughs> <laughs> so I get four magazines worth, so four times eight, that's 48, right? No, 32. 32? 32. Thank you. So I get 32 shots out of this, but I'm looking for the absolute best part of the curve when I'm shooting competition. Mm -hmm. So four magazines worth. Uh, I'll pull up the uh, the 30 caliber here. Don't know if you can zoom in on that, but this is the magazine. You can slide it in from either direction because you can change this index pin. This one's set up to slide in from the right because normally you would have a big wheel or a lot of people have a big wheel on here for the adjustable objective on their scope. These things are super simple to load. Day State recently changed that. And all you do is you pull this gate open, you rotate it all the way clockwise, drop the first one in, it holds it in place, and then just put them in. All you have to do then is close it and slide it into the gun. Wow, Very that's simple. A completely ambidextrous mag. Yes. That's super sweet. It is. Uh, so yeah. this one holds a, this holds 11 on the 22. This is a 22 caliber. That's an odd number. And 11? Yep. Literally. Well, they wanted to maximize <laughs> it. Yes. So, and odd. it loads the same way. So just. Is it ambidextrous too? It is ambidextrous too. So you can see, you just rotate it around, drop the first pellet in. And then just load it, flip the gate up, and slide it in. So what calibers are these available in? 
These are available in 177, 22, 25, and 30. And if you were watching closely, you notice that the barrel on this one is longer. This one has a 23 inch barrel. It is considered the high power version. This one has a 17 inch barrel. It's the standard power. Hmm. But this is still going to really crank it out there. You know, oh, yeah. as we were saying, we're still, you know, right up there in the power. This one is shooting, I think it is between 70 and 80 foot pounds, but I'm shooting it on, min on medium. Oh, wow. So these guns are pre-programmed for three different velocities, high, mid, and low. And so th when the factory tunes them, they try and tune them to the pellet that's most like likely going to be shot in the gun. But if for some reason you're really into competition and you want to tune it specifically to your pellet, there is a nice programmer uh, that you can purchase and then you can customize it. So how to, simple is it to use? Pretty simple. Uh, we actually have a, a YouTube video that our air gun smith did that is excellent. The key is to write down your initial values. Mm -hmm. So if you do forget to hit enter, you can go back to the factory settings and start over. Comes with this cool little programmer and all the cables that you need to program any of the electronic guns in the Day State line. It's wow. not just the Red Wolf, but you go back to the, the Mark III and any of the electronic guns. So compatible with several. That's sweet. That's a really yeah. good idea. Yep. That's and I nice. think this, look it up on airgunsofarizona.com, but I think this is around $300. These run, and they're a little pricey, but in order to get the accuracy, which this one will easily shoot one inch or less at 100, on a good day, and normally with somebody better than me behind the trigger, but easily shoot one inch at 100 yards. Nice. Now we're going to try that in a little while here. Because you have your quadrant, quadrant target. target. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I wanted to mention this is our Aztec scope line that we've got on here. Uh, we also sell sports match rings, which are on here, not on here. Uh, but the Aztec, two and a half to 25, or five to 25 by 50. It also comes in a three to 18 by 50. And we have a first focal point. So great scopes. Good bang for the buck. These run around $400. And the glass is clear. Uh, it comes with a larger wheel uh, that you can put on the parallax. I will say that if you buy one of these, they are stiff when you start out, which you found out when you were trying to yes. change. Yep. And the power will be stiff. This will be stiff. But once they get broken in, why, they function fantastic. So for the money, this is a great scope that we carry. Did you give a price on the guns yet? Did I miss it? Two thousand nine, just under twenty nine hundred. Okay. So I was leading up to that, and then I forgot. So I'm glad you uh, remembered that. So I've got a good excuse for forgetting. <laughs> so uh, let's see, what have we missed on this? So you can program it. It comes pre-programmed in three different settings. Uh, this gun, we've got it set on high, and it's shooting the 25 redesigns from JSB. JSB. This one, instead of the 50s, I tried to get it to shoot the 50s. It likes the 44s. So, and it shoots them better on mid power. But, like I said, it will shoot. I've had three different people shoot this gun at 100, and everybody was able to shoot within a one inch group. <laughs> nice. The gun so, does the work. Yes. Yeah. Real quick over here, this is Rick and I'm off camera, but um, the, I mean, you're talking about the electronics in the gun, but I wanted to kind of make sure people understood that 
what's happening in that gun is that the hammer isn't driven with a spring, it's driven by a solenoid. The trigger is a micro switch. The cocking lever is a micro switch just saying, hey, I'm ready to fire now. Obviously, it does drive the pellet home. But where you have all of these other forces in a traditional gun that um, I won't say work against you, but are necessary for the gun to operate, these guns eliminate that. One of the ways you're getting this extreme accuracy from these guns is that you've eliminated a lot of all those moving parts so that you have a lot less reciprocal mass moving around in the gun so they're ultra stable. More consistent. Yeah. Yes, that electronic solenoid just it just doesn't move the gun. There's not enough inertia there to affect it. Right. Whereas the, a hammer spring is moving it. Although you may not be able to tell it, it does move the gun just a little bit. And at 100 yards, a little teeny bit makes a big difference. Yeah, a tiny so. twitch is the, the win or lose of the match. Yes. It literally is. I mean, I, I was um, kind of thinking of where Air Guns, of Ona, Air Guns of Arizona really fits in the market, and they dwell in that tenth of an inch matters market. Uh, and these guns are in that because a tenth or even a hundredth of an inch means you win or lose a match. And these guns put you in that place that uh, they give you that extra tenth or hundredth of an inch to, to, to either go from placing or winning or not even being in the top ten. That's what these guns do. And that's where Air Guns of Arizona really lives. Uh, that is their speciality. Uh, they even have an entire competition called EBR. Uh, for those that may be watching this that don't know that. Extreme Ventress. Extreme Ventress, that is what they do. Uh, and so this, these guns are tailor-made for that type of competition. One of the things I would say, yes, we specialize in high-end, very accurate, high-quality equipment, but the majority of our customers are the people that are shooting pigeons or rats or things like that in their backyard. So we don't just dwell and focus on this. We carry anywhere from the low mid portion of the air gun range to the best on the market. And now we have a, and we're not going to bring it out, but a Delta Wolf that uh, is the next step up. Uh, we have a question uh, here real quick. Uh, okay. Brian Richards is asking, what pellet is the factory using to tune them so if I don't want to buy the programmer, he doesn't have to. Do you know what, what so, pellet they use to tune with? Right. So this gun, it shoots the 25 redesigns real well, but it also shoots the 18 grain as well. And it'll shoot the 16 JSB pretty well also. And that's the, the unique part about this gun is you can put it on high power, which we're shooting the 25s, and this is the standard power uh, gun. You can put it on medium power, say, to shoot the 18s, and low power to shoot the 16s, and get very good performance out of all of them. So if somebody, if somebody was to call you and say, this is what I want to do with the gun, this is the pellet I want to shoot, could you program it, or would you all program it for that We can thing? do that. There's an additional charge for that, but we can easily do that for you. So, and... We've talked about all this programming. Yes, you can use this to customize it, but all of those features that I'm talking about, you do in the field with the trigger and the gun. There's no screen on here. You pull the trigger, open the bolt, turn off the safety, and it cycles through the different things that you can do. So some of the things you can program it for, you can program it uh, to count the number of shots, so we were talking earlier about, you know, on this gun, you shoot eight shots, it won't shoot the ninth shot. It tells you, hey, dummy, you're out. I'm out. Uh, this one, you do for 11. Uh, you can count the number of shots. It will tell you how many shots and display that. That's awesome. I don't it know how many times yeah. I've run out of pellets and dry fire a gun. That's awesome. It displays the pressure in the tank. Uh, and tells you how much air is in the gun. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else, of course, the power levels, but that's just a few of the things that you can do, and you can do it in the field. So, or you can turn 
the magazine counter off so that you know you just always remember your shot count or it doesn't matter on the range and you don't have to deal with that because sometimes you'll have to you know you might feed a pellet and get to doing something and have to pull the magazine out because you can't remember yeah. and so you can just turn that off and continue shooting on the range uh, what's the fill pressure fill pressure is 250 bar on these guns so they take a good charge and I typically uh, will shoot these down to 150 bar and I'll be more than on the regulator that's in here which the regulator is electronic it's that solenoid where you can change the how hard the solenoid hits the valve pin and how long it dwells there so that's what makes these so unique that you can tune them to a particular pellet real quick if you guys are interested in something like this um, which who wouldn't be if you're a serious arrogant enthusiast uh, make sure that you have a chronograph because without that you're not going to know what your settings are doing so you absolutely Correct. have to have that piece of equipment i know we've talked about that several times during the show or during the expo here because um, a lot of the guns we're looking at have the ability to tune them or uh, modify them and you don't know what you're getting whether you've gone forwards or backwards unless you have a way to measure it so a decent chronograph and you can buy a decent chronograph without breaking the bank um, and you should just do it. If you're an air gunner, buy a chronograph. It will, uh, it will pay for itself uh, probably pretty quickly, you'll, and you'll enjoy using it. And once you establish a program, if you're custom tuning this, if you shoot it through the chronograph, that gives you a baseline where, well, I don't know if it's shooting just right. Shoot it through the chronograph and see. And it will tell you, oh, yeah, the, you know, that's shooting low or it's shooting high. Oh, I normally shoot it on mid power and I've got it on high. So it's just one of those things that will help you out. But yeah, a good chronograph is key uh, when you're really trying to get accuracy. So Let's if shoot. you wanted to hear us talk, you'd have watched the studio version. <laughs> Let's do some shooting. All right. One Let's last, this one one last question. One last question before you guys get going. Um, when you guys are, um, when the gun is in operation, does the screen stay on? Does it kind of cycle on and off? Is there something? Does, it turns how long, on and off. Okay, so how long? Uh, sorry. You can program how long it stays on. Okay, and how long does the battery last with, on the gun? Because obviously there's a battery that makes all this happen. They rate these at over 5,000 shots. Okay. So I use this one, getting it all set up and everything for two months. I don't know how many shots. There's probably four tens of the uh, 30 caliber pellets. And I thought while we were down here, I thought, well, I better charge it up. And so I charged it up. So the batteries, uh, you know, they're lithium ion. So more than a day at the range is what you're oh. saying. <laughs> I got More you. than a week at the range. Yeah, uh, that's cool. People. That's cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. All right. Let's set this thing aside. We'll shoot it at 100 in a little bit. Uh, this does have a true carbon fiber. This is not a wrap. Uh, shroud on it uh, with one baffle inside. Uh, you'll notice on this 30 caliber when we shoot it, it's quiet enough that you could go hunting with it. I've got a moderator on here simply so that we can demonstrate that you can put a moderator on it you can take it off whatever you want to do so these guns are not loud okay so you want to load it or you want sure so you have a simple side lever here you want to focus in on that and as you can see this thing is butter smooth and easy there's a little detent to hold it closed and that's the most pressure in the entire cycle it's not loaded i didn't load it oh you didn't load the nope. magazine did you want to show okay. them how to load it sure i'm going to pull this over here so that you can get up there so they can see what you're doing okay so just turn it 
All the way. And we're using this great ransom rest that they provided, which is really nice here. You can place the first pellet in and that locks it. And then load. Super simple. We were talking about the bark of these, which there isn't any. Now that's one of the things that draws non-shooters to this sport is it's quiet. You don't have to wear hearing protection. If you've got a new shooter, it's easy to instruct them uh, on what they need to do, answer their questions. It's much less intimidating than a firearm where you've got hearing protection on and all other sorts of things going on. But don't make the mistake of thinking these things aren't dangerous because they can hurt you. Yeah. Angie, go in from the other side. No, it needs to come in from this okay, side. Okay, it's offside. Okay. Because it has that there it is. set pin on new. it. I thought this it was is a new magazine yeah. that I picked up and it's getting better. You know, at first we really had to crunch it in there. Now it slides in fairly easily but it will get better with time. So, all right. Super smooth and You're gonna I like, shoot at 50 yards, right? Yep. I like the placement of the safety. It's Yeah, that's another feature of this stock. Not only do you have an adjustable cheek piece, but this rifle is set up so that you can shoot thumb around. Let's see, check out the, the safety right here. Just slide it over. Yep. Or you can shoot thumb up because when you're shooting Competitively, I like to get my thumb up so my trigger break is straight back. It's natural. Right. And I'm not, with my thumb, I tend to torque it a little bit. Can you tell us that again, please? So, sure. Safety right here. I say sure. Angie's <laughs> having to do all of it. <laughs> okay. Now, right. I sighted this in earlier, and the trigger is super super light so let me go for the and we've got the camera down there are you ready yep. okay i'm gonna go for the bottom left small target oh, yeah see i pulled the trigger a little too soon <laughs> it's super so, light these triggers are fully adjustable as rick said it's a micro switch that you're making but you can make it a one stage trigger which this one's pretty close to a single stage you can also make it a two stage and bring it up to where you've got a good wall there and then it breaks like a slide on a microscope that piece of glass just super crisp So if you can't adjust this gun to your liking, you just need to work at it a little more because it's possible. That's beautiful. I'm shooting a little high, but um, it's grouping pretty good. And this is 50 yards we're shooting at. So it's not like we're shooting at 25 yards, which is pretty easy to shoot a good group, but 50 yards, it gets a little tougher. And we've got a little right left breeze The gun is unbelievably quiet. It sounds yeah. no louder than a CO2, a moderated CO2 gun. <laughs> Most of what I'm hearing is the solenoid hitting the valve pin is a little ping. From here, we can't even hear that, Larry. All, we can, we, all I can hear is the pellet moving through the air. It, it's, it's like we hear a sizzle, and I think the target noise at 50 yards is louder than the gun. I, I would agree. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. It's that quiet. It's crazy. It's really that ridiculous. Is. And now the airliner's covering Yeah, that. yeah. So, yeah. That is lovely. That is just, woo, so sweet. But watch the trick. What are your favorite yeah. colors, Angie? My favorite colors? I like green. J-State's got to come out one. with a green and laminate And stuff. in the Wolverine R, which is the mechanical version of this, they have a forest laminate, mm. which Ooh. you saw it on the van there. It is beautiful. And these, that. you know, you worry about taking these things into the field. I let anybody and everybody shoot this gun 
It's been on there for over a year. You see any major dings on it? No, not at so all. So it is a durable finish. Now you can damage it, but if you take reasonable care, taking it into the field is not an issue. I like I like the stocks that are kind of contoured to your um, to your human body. I mean, it makes it so much more yeah. comfortable. Ergonomic. Yes. How's yes. the uh, finger grip? Because this actually fits me. The trigger, not only can you adjust how much pressure it takes to fire the gun, but you can also change the cant and the height of the trigger oh shoot. Oh, golly. Hey, Larry. So. Hey, Larry, let's, hey, Larry, let's pull the moderator up. Let's see if we can actually hear this gun. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I want to see if it actually... So it's half 20. Uh-huh. Just standard thread. What so kind of moderator put, is that that you have on there? Uh, this one is a Hugget. Oh, okay. The one that does an even better job, which we don't need it on here, is the Zero DB. Oh, yeah. It's actually manufactured by the same company that makes the parts for Daystate and Brokock. Okay. And we found that it is the most quiet. Uh, we also sell another moderator. And the difference is the frequency. So it's sort of what your ear hears. What we need to do is figure out what the squirrel or the rabbit hears <laughs> and moderate that frequency. Yes. You might so. just think a branch is cracking or something. Yeah. And be just fine with it. Okay, ready? Absolutely. Yeah. On these guns, hopefully I can talk while you shoot. Will that distract you? No, go for or it. Or does this distract you? <laughs> <laughs> That's called cheating. <laughs> <laughs> On these guns, if you're really trying to compete with them, try it with the moderator off. Try single shot loading. The Where the magazine goes in is big enough. Even with my big thumbs, I can feed in a pellet single shot. And we sell some single shot trays that you can load. I and wouldn't... almost... Every air gun shoots a little better if Slow you down, Angie. every pellet by hand. Now, I wanted to just, I, I wanted you to save a couple shots so we put the moderator back on okay. so they can hear the difference. Um, but that is like, <laughs> it's really that's quiet. quiet. <laughs> that's, that's about as loud as a normal gun with a sensor. Yeah, so that's really quiet. It's loud. And, and this is sort of where all those electronics and, and, uh, engineering comes into play because you're not using more air than you need to um, so it really it it is impressive uh, very very and, impressive and you know how much i like a quiet gun rick yeah i wouldn't even put a moderator on that gun i'd, yeah, run, it with these, I'd run it without one rick hit on something that i should have mentioned one of the reasons why you get the large shot count out of these is that the electronics are very efficient Whereas a spring, you get pretty close, a hammer spring, but still you're going to waste just a little bit of air. These can be tuned to where, I mean, they're using just enough yeah, air. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm chuckling because it's like, is it working? <laughs> that has got to be the quietest air rifle I've ever heard. It is really quiet. <laughs> uh, can they, I wonder if Beautiful they can... Yeah. Oh, it'll do that all day. I, I wonder if um, I wonder if people online can even hear. I don't know, anything. man. I need to maybe put the I mic mean, we're only, right we're up. We're only eight feet away. So maybe I wonder if they can hear. Maybe they can hear the sound of the pellet sizzling. Maybe. Uh, I Road think. Runner. What? Roadrunner. Road, don't shoot my roadrunner. <laughs> nah, he eats the that, stuff. That, that could be. That could be. Uh, Ronnie. We have Ronnie the Roadrunner that lives at our chapel, so he would be a nice Roadrunner. Yeah, we like Roadrunners in Arizona, too. Um, so now that you've put it. that in and out, it's getting easier, right? The key is mm -hmm. that, you know, it actually has a little guide here on the gun and a slot on the magazine, but you need to have that magazine perfectly level and it slides right in there. You want to switch and shoot some 100? Sure. While you do that, I'm going to get the camera and moved. Now this 100 yard, this 30 caliber has no moderator on it. So we'll get to see, and 
we're shooting between 60 and 70 foot pounds. So you get to see uh, how quiet these things can be even at power. Oh. Sorry about leaving you out there in okay. Facebook land. It's okay. Yeah. Now you notice we've got the uh, AccuTac mount on here. So I'm just going to pull this out to get it down. And we've got that quadrant target out there. You notice all I had to do to raise this up is just pull on it. To lower it, all I have to do is push the button. Why don't you show that, show that again there, Larry. I will do that again. So what I was saying was, all you have to do to, you know, I just pulled down against the spring and brought it out to 45. Uh, and then it was still a little bit too low. The barrel was pointing down. So I just grabbed this and pulled it out. Now, if I want to retract it, all I have to do is push this button. And I was telling Rick last night, this comes, we sell three different styles of shoes. Uh, this is the smallest one. We have one that is about twice this size uh, in both directions. And then we actually have a shoe. So if you're out, you know, shooting prone in the desert or you set your gun down, it's got a nice flat shoe, even though you may be in sand. So these are great rests. Real quick, Larry. Oops, real quick, Larry. Um, can you let folks know why you would want a wide stance rest? And if I'm correct, this is your personal competition gun, correct? Is this what you used to compete yes. with? Okay, so this is your baby. This is the one that you, now, you know. I shoot a little different rest because yep. mine, I can adjust the cant, which okay. is the next level up on this. Okay, but yes. let people know why you'd want that wide stance. I, think, I mean, we know, maybe they know, and I'm asking a dumb question, but maybe other people don't know why you would want something like that versus just a couple sticks. So if you watch a really good bench rest shooter, he normally, I mean, at 25 meters, they don't even touch the gun when they fire it. They have a rest, they adjust it, to where they want the pellet to go. And in my case, I bracket where I want it to go so I can see the actual kill zone or the center of the target. And they'll look at their wind flags or their neighbor's wind flags. There's normally a hundred of them out there. And when the wind flags match what they've lined up on the target, they just reach down and touch the trigger. When you're getting out to 50 and 100 yards, you, this is a more stable platform than that rest. Any teetering left or right might mean the difference between a 10 and an X. You want the X, which is a 10 amplified. It takes out the center of the target. So, and it may come down to, you know, who shot the most, the highest score. And if it's tied, then they look at the number of X's. And so this wide stance, and the reason why I, uh, push it forward is at 50 and 100 yards, I'm going to put a little pressure on the back of this stock. This is pushing back and holding it in place. It's not going to teeter back and forth because instead of a stance that's this wide, as you have, you know, on most rests or bipods, you have a stance this wide. And if I stand like this and she pushes me, and my feet are just this far apart. I was tempted. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was watching you. As opposed to this far apart, you get the concept. So that's why a rest like this is important. Uh, these guns tend to shoot better at 50 and 100 yards on the bipod. So it, in a sense, it takes a lot of the human error out of it. Right. That's what you're trying to do yeah. is take that... Uh, humanness out of it so that you're not introducing anything into the gun that will affect the sight picture. Hmm. Pretty cool. All right, so I prepared in advance. We've got a couple magazines all loaded up. 
So you got 16 shots ready to go, and I brought the uh, pellets out here so that if we get really ambitious. Oh yeah, see how easy that one went in? Yeah, that one's been used a lot. I normally single shot load it, but if the wind dies down, I'll throw a magazine in and get as many downrange as I can for fear the wind's going to pick up again. So why do you normally single shot load it? because it will be slightly more accurate. You know there's no nicks, dings, anything. My last inspection is to look at the dome of that pellet. You even have a fingernail scratch in the front of the pellet. It can affect where it impacts. Cool. Learning more and more. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, look out deer in South Carolina. <laughs> Okay, get it focused, and then uh, remember you're going to hold at the four, and it should be good left and right, at least it was for me. And this has, this has, hold on, try. And this has no moderation at all on it. No. Open barrel. Right. I've sh I shot this gun, it's, a, it's so quiet, and you can't believe it has nothing It's about quiet. 68 foot-pounds. Yeah, it's right at 70. Did they throw rocks through the middle? I don't know. It might have. Like I say, it's sighted in at 100 yards. We were hitting it sure? repeatedly the other day. Looks like the wind's blowing it a little right to left. You can see from the banner here that we're getting some right left wind. And of course it's coming over that berm. So that's a hit the one inch, one yeah. inch uh, center on that quadrant target. The quadrant target's four inches. Oh. Oh. I killed it. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna run out. Go ahead and let's open it. Open the bolt. Pull the magazine out. Put it on. Safe. I'm gonna see Travis run. Oh, I think we should put the camera on him. That's not even speed walking, dude. <laughs> so as you can see, while. you know, did this stock feel any different than the red one? Um, I think the other one's got more of a glossier, a glossier finish on it. But yeah, but the feel in really. your hand is no, exactly the same. same. Yeah. So every day state Red Wolf that day state makes, that's one of the keys to day state and their level of quality is if I have one red wolf and my charging lever breaks I just move it over very very good quality control so they do the same thing uh, with these stocks these stocks are made in Spain uh, by their company and every stock is exactly the same we could switch this action with the red one and you wouldn't know the difference if you were blindfolded just feeling it. and it would shoot just as well now the point of impact i almost guarantee you would change but it would fit right in there i'm i'm noticing that's the quality you're getting in day state is the charging handle ambidextrous can you move it to the other side yes it is and I it's was, very easily switched from left to right yeah so these guns are truly ambi you know the only thing that isn't is the safety, and you're just always going to push it from left to right. Sure, I got it. But it's right back here where a lefty or I actually right like the safety yeah. at, at the thumb. Of that, that is a, as a my, one of my preferred positions for safety is yeah. right there. Yeah. And on these safeties, when you see nothing, it's on safe. When you see a red dot, it's ready to fire, which is kind of a standard even in the firearms industry. Now, you had the Aztec optic on the other one waiting for Travis to come back here. Uh, he had to walk 500 yards to set that target back up. Um, I, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> what scope are you running on this right now? Uh, this one happens to be an Athlon, uh, 8 to 34 by 56. Uh, because we're shooting 100 yards, it gathers a little more light, 30 millimeter tube, and this one has those fancy uh, fully ad or uh, fully adjustable rings too, correct? 
Uh, no, this one just has standard high range. Oh, really? Range. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. And we're only shooting it on 24 power because okay. that's what I shoot for extreme field targets. All right. Now, if I was shooting a bench rest match, I'd crank it up to just shy of 34. Okay. Most scopes, if you take it to the maximum power, you get a little distortion at the edges. You crank it back just a millimeter or two, and they Clears really up. snap in. All right. And I see. I had another question. And I've got a level point. on it, which yep. canting the rifle will affect your elevation. So if you start canting the rifle, that's one of the reasons why on my competition rest, I can actually loosen it if the bench isn't perfectly level and make sure that my gun is level so I can adjust that cant and tighten it up. And then I don't have to worry about it. So what's the warranty on these, do you know? The warranty on these is five years. So the first three years are covered by the factory and then Air Guns of Arizona and Precision Air Gun Distribution picks up the additional two years. That's how much confidence we have in these guns. And I don't think you'll find anybody with a better warranty than that. And with the Brocock line, a uh, close cousin or brother or sister, whatever you want to call them, they have a three-year warranty on them. Factory covers a year, and we add two. Nice. So, yeah. All right, Angie. You're set. All Let's right. hit that target. See if you can kill that target again. There's a few left in that. And, and, one, and once again, no moderator. Open barrel. Right. So I'll be quiet while she shoots it. And guess what? Helps if you take the safety off. Cycle it. There we go. Oh. And yeah. you can adjust how long this gun stays active uh, before it goes to sleep like that. But if it does go to sleep, just cycle your uh, bolt or cycle your safety a couple of times and you're Ooh. back up and operational. And just so everyone knows out there, that quadrant, and I, I'm sure they said again, is 100 yards away. Yes. And there's a little snap here with no moderator. Oh, it's quiet. But super quiet. If so, whoops. That was real loud. Yeah. <laughs> but no pellet in there. If, yep. if you wanted to throw a moderator on it, is it threaded at the end? Yes. When okay. she fires it this time, we'll put it on safe. I'm not, I'm not adjusting the windage right. So all of these guns, again, carbon fiber shroud, but all of these guns come with a barrel nut, which protects the threads here on the end. Is that standard one half UNF you said? Yes, standard UNF. So if and I had like a zero dB or something, I could just throw that on and go, we all be all set. Right. Cool. And one thing I would suggest to make sure you don't end up with any clipping or worrying about that is always go a caliber larger than what you're shooting. That's you know, good. If you're buying a 22 yeah. or a 177, buy a 25. Yep. If you're shooting a 25, just get the 30. Yeah. No, I, mean, I think that's great. But advice. if you want something that's going to maximize the silencing and are willing to work with it, if there is a little clipping, then buy the caliber specific. And it'll be slightly quieter if you're getting your meter out, I guess. Yeah, I don't think it's be audibly quieter. It's going to be something you get with a meter. Oh, too far. <laughs> Are you it. having any trouble getting that thing to break and feeling the second stage? I like a little heavier trigger than most folks. All right, while you guys so. do that, I'm going to try something. Um, pardon the noise. I'm going to get where you are, Cheryl. I want you guys to sort of see. We're going to leave. Uh, we're going to switch over to the this camera here, Sue. What I want you to do is put Cheryl's camera in the uh, as the big picture and the quadrant target as a small picture because I want people to see how far how far 100 yards is. It's not 100 feet. I got it. I <laughs> you got, got it. it. Good right. job. 
Okay, so this is how, this is the range we're shooting on, and this is how far out we are. And I'm gonna just zoom in to that target out there. This is so much fun. Hold on, I'm gonna bring it back out. There it is, nice. As you guys can see, this is like a solid 100 yards. And she's just smacking it all day long. Yep, that's it. Okay, somebody yeah. else want to come up and... He's kicking me to the curb. I know Rick does. <laughs> How about you, Joe? I, I, I don't shot, think you've shot, shot this, have you, Joe? Would right, you like to? Or are you... Is your Joe's on the way. To? <laughs> Super light trigger. Hey, Larry, you want to put some air in it? Uh... Don't think we need to. We can always check the gauge here. Oh no, we still got 193 bar in it, so we're good. Okay, so this magazine's already loaded. Is that true? This one's loaded. And I'll let you get the uh, mic all set up there. I'm going to let you do all of this. So on your hold, <coughs> right. there's four major divisions okay. below the crosshairs. Okay. You want to use the number four. Number four. <coughs> Oops, geez. Sure. Number four, right? <coughs> yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, we're getting a breeze from the right here. There it is. That's a long way out there. Oh, I gotta get my eye relief right. And this particular gun at mid power shoots the 44 grain JSBs, which you can get from Predator Pellet or Predator International. Isn't that the name of that place? Yeah, that's the name of the place. All right. You're lucky enough. <laughs> can you really get them? I'm not answering that. On a good day. All right, so is and there an auto safety nice on here? Joe. Is there auto safety or is it just good to go? Uh, it's on safe. Okay. So I always cycle it a couple of times just to make sure. All right, and that, does that wake the computer up or something? Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going for it. Wow. Everything we've been shooting so far is in semi-auto, and I'm waiting for it to cycle itself. <laughs> You said it was going right, Angie? Yep. Mm. Right to left. Yeah, oh, geez. Right. That's going left on me. Yeah, the wind's coming from your right. Okay, thank you. There we go. This is our wind flag right here. <laughs> Two for go. one. It's hard to believe that doesn't have any moderation. Like that. Yeah, it's nice. It's quiet. Well, got it that time. That was a, what a prairie dog on a soda. Yeah. Real yeah. expensive prairie dog. Yeah, I thought it was empty. I'm going to have to come up and see you and uh, see what this thing will do beyond 100. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah. This is cool. Yeah. All right, do I get a turn? Sure. Heck yeah. <laughs> How about now? Do, do we need air yet? I was going to walk off with them. <laughs> <laughs> we are shooting a 30. No, we only use 10 bar there. So okay. we're down to 180. How many magazines? Yeah, that's a really nice shot? rig. I don't that's know. That's a really well, that's nice rig. If you shoot down to 150, <clears throat> I only do it to 170 in competition. Okay. Yeah. Just to make that's sure. That's what I was thinking. The shot count's amazing. Is this the first focal plane scope? Yes, it is. That bottle isn't even that big. It's a 480 cc bottle, 23 inch barrel. And the barrels on these, like most PCPs, 
ends about right here, and then you have one stripper on there. Larry, who makes the barrel in that? Lothar Walther. Oh, the, okay, the LW barrels? And I assume you know, they I said that, that I've mentioned throughout the week that Day State and Brokock work well with us. Yeah. They are sensitive to the U.S. market and they take our input and we take our customers' input and give it to them and incorporate it into the guns. Lothar Walther has done the same thing. Yeah. So I've, I've worked with LW. You can't just buy this barrel from Lothar Walther. Right. It is unique to Day State. Right. And the new Delta Wolf, we worked extensively with Lothar Walther. Frank and, uh, and is very we, cooperative. And we got a couple people asking online if we're going to shoot that Delta Wolf. We can uh, we can work that in. And when we do, this this guy right here is going to be shooting it. <laughs> <laughs> he's the one I've been having to watch this week. Yeah, with the Delta yeah. Wolf. He's keeping the. It's got band. that tactical look, and he likes that. Oh yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Some people like the traditional wood. Sure. Other people like the tactical look. Okay, so like hold on, hold on, hold on, just a second. Let me sweep my mics this one. All right. So I want to walk you guys through the shooting experience just a little bit here. Yeah, that's okay? a great idea. Um, because, first of all, the scope is, I can see why you would use this for, ben for bench rest um, or the extreme field target. It has a ton of aim points, but not so much that they're distracting. They don't like actually obscure your shot. So if I'm four high, it's got I don't know how many... It's got like quarter mil dots as you get over to one mil left and then another mil on the four lines. So you have just a ton of extremely pre precise aim points. Um, so you could, with a little practice, just absolutely dial in every stinking aspect of this. Yeah, and this is the middle of the Athlon line. There you go. We carry a lot of different scopes, uh, and it depends on what you're going to be doing with it. This is not a scope that I there would take hunting because it doesn't have a wide enough field of view even at the low power setting. So there's no way to chase a squirrel through the trees with this unless you're really good. Whereas a four or six power. Rick, is this is. your first time shooting a day state? It is. Let me tell you, let, let me tell you how easy it is to walk that shot in. Um, it is my first time ever shooting this gun, ever. And the trigger um, the trigger will surprise you, so you got to really watch the trigger because it's, it, it, there's nothing mechanical, it's a little switch. Um, but because they have so many little dots, I can bracket, I could put the third little dot and then the fourth, the mill, and just sort of rest those under the one inch circle, and that's where your shot falls. Um, and I just hit the center twice. Yeah, and that center, by the way, is a it's one, one inch, inch circle. At 100 yards, I think in a cross breeze. I think you actually hit it three times, Rick. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but left. every single shot on that quadrant down there would be a kill shot. Oh goodness, yes. That's a tiny target. Yeah, that would be a kill shot on a ringneck dove. Yeah. Oh yeah. A pigeon. A, a rat. Tree squirrel. You could probably hit a mouse down there. Oh, I'm sure you could. If it's, he'd stand still long enough. Yeah, if he could get him to stand. Well, you wouldn't hear it coming. Larry, do you have a moderator? No, uh, that that's, I, I have some, but let's. It doesn't um, yeah. need it. No, I'm no. going to do one more. Not Larry. at all. Okay. <laughs> all right, so, all right, you know what? I just did a typical bonehead thing because you're Didn't supposed to open up. this up <laughs> and then put it in. I apologize. I just no, was okay. not paying attention to all of your expertise. I got so excited about taking just one more shot. And and I've seen a lot of magazines and used a lot of magazines. And that magazine design right there is yeah. beautiful. So do this for me. Kay. We talked about single shot loading. I'm Try sorry, one. sorry, sorry. It bumps your hand. And here. these things aren't plastic magazines. Yeah. They're made out of aluminum. And you can butt them up back to back. Uh, that's on the Delta Wolf. Oh, on the Delta Wolf. Yes. Yeah, let's get that out. <laughs> no, not now. Come on now.
Yeah, I'm just, uh, I need a little more time, but I think, I think it is absolutely doable, probably one of the most accurate rifles I've ever shot, um, because I'm getting very close to that center every single time, and in beautiful conditions today, by the way, it's probably the best conditions we've had all week, which is why yes. we've saved this for now, and we've got other guns that we're going to be pulling out, the same sort of precision guns, so it has been awesome. I think we've got, gosh, how, how, we've spent some time on these. Larry, you know, I, here's the thing too. Um, that gun, with even if you put a beginner on that gun, someone who's never shot an air rifle before, could make them shoot really well in a very short time. It's that easy to shoot. Yes, it's very easy to shoot. It'll spoil you. It yeah. will absolutely spoil you. Yeah, it'll make and you. you it'll make you not. For your very own yeah. Arizona or Air Guns of Arizona. Absolutely. Com. Or call our number. If you do call the number, truly believe that if you leave your name and phone number, they will call you back. Yeah. They don't have a choice because when they pick up the phone, they can't jump to the guy. <laughs> there you go. On the line, they go to the first well, guy that called in or gal. And you're taking um, deposits on these. And if you if you're waiting for them to get in, in stock, if it's not in stock, you're going to be waiting a long time because the people who put deposits on them get first dibs. Right. And we get about two shipments a month of Brocock and Daystate. Yeah. So they do a good job of keeping us pretty well supplied. Obviously, the most popular, like the Delta Wolf right now, mm -hmm. just launched. They can't make them fast enough. I, but I imagine. models like this, you know, a lot of people have them in their hands. And most of the time, we'll have them in stock. Well, High power or regular. Well, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Larry, thank you for bringing out some very, very cool toys. Um, thank you for coming out in general and sponsoring this event. I mean, uh, back to, you know, why we're here is to show you guys some of the coolest air gun tech that we can get our hands on. And you brought out some of the coolest. Um, we've seen some great stuff this week. And we're not done yet. So I definitely want to say yes. I've got one other thing to mention. If you are a dealer, and we have about 80 go. dealers throughout the U.S., you can stock this gun. You can become one of our dealers. Uh, Precision Air Gun Distribution is our wholesale portion of our company, and the margins on these are multiples higher than firearms. Yes, if you're a firearms so, dealer and you've been struggling with trying to make ends meet, you really need to look at air guns in general. The margins are way better. There's a little rabbit over there just hanging out, just chilling. Yeah, uh, sorry, shiny thing. Um, so definitely give these guys a call. Get signed up as a dealer. And they have a product range that starts from entry level to extreme awesomeness. So. Yep. Precision Air Gun Distribution. Distribution.com. Yep. There you go. Guys, we're going to wrap it up. Note. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, thanks for watching. This is Air Gun Expo. We'll say thank you to our sponsors, um, Gateway to Air Guns, Air Guns of Arizona. Predator International, JSP Pellets, JS, uh, Predator Pellets, all those guys. Just an awesome group of folks that made all this happen. Stay with us. We're not even close to being done yet. We've got several more cool range things to get to today. So we're going to go reset, and we'll be back here in just a little while. Thanks for watching. Thanks.